So, Fallout 4, ho hold on, hold on, this is related to GTA 4, I swear, just stay with me for a second here. Ahem. So, Fallout 4 is a game that I have often heard criticized as being a bad Fallout game, and it's a criticism I personally think is well-deserved. Let me clarify. I think there is a ton to love about Fallout 4. The weapon and armor customization is great. The exploration is among the best the series ever delivered. The gunplay was still lacking compared to a lot of modern shooters, but still miles better than anything we got in 3 or New Vegas. And the environmental storytelling was, as always with Bethesda games, on point. And if you enjoy the idea of building your own settlements, or vaults, or that kind of stuff, you can have hundreds or even thousands of hours of fun just building, scavenging, and optimizing your settlements. It is great fun. However, the story is just crap. I am not a fan of it for a variety of reasons. Without getting too bogged down into the details here, since I do want to loop this back to the subject in the title of this video... When I think about the things that make me truly love my personal favorite entries in the Fallout franchise, the original Fallout 1 and New Vegas, they are completely different from basically any of the things that I enjoy about Fallout 4. World building, player choice that accounts for a large variety of potential obscure actions the player might make, an emphasis on believability within the established world of Fallout, but not necessarily realism as it pertains to our own world, since the two universes are distinctly different. Fallout 4 is, to me, a great game, but a terrible Fallout game. Now, at this point, with Bethesda holding the reins on the franchise longer than any other developer ever did, that argument might be moot. But I hope you understand the point that I'm making, even if you don't agree with it. So, let's bring it back to Grand Theft Auto. Lately, I've been having the thought that GTA 4, the entry in the franchise I have often thought of as my personal favorite, and which has arguably the most die-hard, dedicated fanbase of any individual game in the franchise, is kind of a bad GTA game. Calm down. Calm down. I still very much enjoy GTA 4's gameplay, but allow me to elaborate a bit more on this keeping in mind the example I just laid out of the Fallout franchise. Now, it may or may not be a secret to you that GTA 4's story was heavily, and I do mean heavily, inspired by, or arguably even based on, a Russian crime drama called Brother, or Brat, from 1997. I've only seen it once, and it was definitely a good watch, but I also imagine it hits home a lot harder for actual Russians than it ever could for a not-so-humble Canadian like myself. Brat is a dark movie, though. Very dark. Like, it has very little comedy to it at all, at least watching it as an outsider. Those dark elements are what formed the basis for GTA 4's original story. Many characters and ideas from the movie were directly transposed onto the world of GTA 4 and molded to fit the world of its HD universe Liberty City setting. Characters like Nico Bellic, Dmitry Raskolov, Ray Bulgarin, etc, etc. GTA 4 is, as many of you probably already know, a very dark story. In fact, I don't think it's controversial to say that GTA 4 has the darkest story in the entire franchise. It also happens to kind of just be literally dark taking place in Liberty City, where it ain't exactly always sunny like Los Santos, and also coming out during the height of the Gears of War era of games, where everything was a distinct shade of grey. But more than anything else, its story is one that takes itself very seriously. Nico Bellic is in America after having served as a smuggler of not just illicit substances, but more often than not, people and not because he was just such a nice guy. In fact, if you pay attention, the thing that got him in trouble with the game's secondary antagonist, Ray Bulgarin, was him losing some cargo back in Eastern Europe. That cargo was, well, it was people. So, do the math. 
On top of that, there's Nico's backstory and history of having served in one of the real world's most forgotten and horrific wars, the Yugoslav Wars of the 1990s, following the end of the Soviet Union. Besides hiding from Ray Bulgarin, Nico goes to Liberty City primarily to find one of the men that betrayed Nico's platoon of young men in the war in a violent massacre that was so traumatic that even a man like Nico struggles to talk about it. In most GTA games, one of the first big bosses you work for will eventually betray you in some way, or give the player good cause to take them out and often take over their former businesses. In GTA 4, it's actually something that Nico doesn't even want to do and is orchestrated by the man you kill's supposed best friend. Or, jumping to another example here, let's look at the character of Dwayne Forge. Here's a man who just got out of prison only to find that his former partner has taken over all of his former businesses, and despite being offered a chance numerous times to continue running a portion of that former business, it instead quickly devolves into a dick measuring contest, which results in one of the two former best friends dying at the player's hands. Dwayne himself talks about some pretty dark topics that I dare not even mention by name thanks to the all-seeing YouTube censors. The choice that the player is given through Dwayne's mission thread is really messed up, and then there's the apparent psychological toll that killing him takes on Nico should the player decide to go that route when finally given the option. Or how about the game's first tertiary antagonist, Vladimir Glebov? Here's a man who is truly and inarguably disgusting, a violent, arrogant, misogynistic bully who has seemingly no redeemable qualities whatsoever, or one of the many McCreary siblings like Derek, perhaps one of the most pathetic surface-level characters the franchise has ever produced, whom you find literally passed out either drunk or high on a park bench in the middle of one of the only neighborhoods that hasn't made him a pariah yet, begging you to help him eliminate all of his former friends. Or there's the mysterious Agent ULP, who literally sees Nico working for the GTA Universe's version of one of the most horrifyingly real-world institutions in the history of anything, the CIA, or the IAA. I could go on, and let me be clear, I am not saying characters with dark backgrounds were anything new to the GTA franchise by the time that 4 came out. But the number of characters with truly disturbing origin stories that are far more based in dark realities of our own world versus the rest of the franchise is noticeable, to say the least. There were always some really messed up characters in GTA, but throughout the franchise's history, the silliness of the world around them always made these characters stick out intentionally. It was far more common to have characters that were mostly just a joke, with the darker elements being unspoken or implied as part of the series' attempt at social commentary that these kind of things happen at all in the real world. In GTA 4, though, all of these elements are far more explicitly said, and in my opinion, are the norm rather than the exception. In GTA 4, the horrifying social commentary aspect of the world is front and center, while the more subtle, dark humor, jokey parts and characters are actually more often in the background. When you look at the GTA franchise as a whole, GTA 4 was kind of weird. This video and all videos on my channel are brought to you in large part by the wonderful support of my YouTube members and by patrons on Patreon.com. An extra special thank you to my executive producer and Walkerville tier supporters, Ezra Hambrick, Mason Collin, Chuck K45, King GTA 15, Die Castinator, and Michael Vandenberg. Supporters at these tiers also have the option to promote a little bit of their own content, so this video is also brought to you by Ezra's YouTube channel, Scott Games 99. Mason Collins' podcast channel, We're About Everything, Chuck K45's Upstart Farming channel, and Diecastinator's channel, All About Diecast Cars. I release all videos a little early to all supporters and give you any of the original music tracks created for a given video. 
You'll also get to see your name in the credits of all videos produced while you are pledged, get access to a small patron slash members only Discord server where you can easily speak with me or see little behind the scenes snippets, and you'll receive my eternal gratitude. Seriously, especially these days, those of you who support my work directly are absolutely incredible, and I can't properly express how grateful I am to you all. Sign up as a YouTube member today, or get slightly better prices at patreon.com forward slash the criminal historian. Thank you so much for watching. Let's play a game. I'm going to try summarizing each of the game's stories in a paragraph or two with the exception of the 2D era games, and you tell me if you notice anything. GTA 3 is about a pair of bank robbers, who are also lovers, but one of them betrays the other out of greed and ambition. The betrayed, your player character Claude, then spends the rest of the game working for every gang in the city, with little to no actual interest in any of their individual personal motivations at all, in an effort to locate his traitorous ex-girlfriend and finally get revenge. Vice City is about a talented Liberty City mobster who is betrayed by his former boss for being a potential threat to his leadership. He's exiled to another city on the other side of the country, and goes to conduct a deal to set up his former boss with a revenue stream in the south. The deal goes wrong though, and the player then spends the first part of the game finding the man responsible for the ambushed deal. He then spends the second half building up his own criminal empire before his boss finally comes down to confront him. He kills his boss and claims his spot as the rightful owner of his new empire. San Andreas is about a gangster who ran away from home after his own mistakes led to the death of a close family member. He then works with his former friends to build the gang back up to strength before being betrayed by one of them and getting exiled from the city that he calls home. He goes on a criminal adventure across the entire state, meets hipsters, fights and works for the government, and becomes a music producer before finally returning to his hometown to take down the corrupt police officer and his former friend, who betrayed him, and presumably claim his spot as king of the city with his gang back at full strength. Liberty City Stories is about an exceedingly loyal mobster who returns to his city after spending years away for doing a high-level assassination. He works with some of the city's most eccentric criminals and helps his boss, whom he views as a kind of father, to slowly put the city back into their family's control while never questioning any of his decisions, except for, arguably, in the very end, though we learn from his next appearance that nothing ever came from it. Vice City Stories is about a man who joins the army to help pay for his family's medical bills, and ends up getting dishonorably discharged when he does work for his highly corrupt commanding officer. He falls in love, his lunatic brother comes to visit, and he then spends the better part of a year building a massive empire for seemingly no reason other than because it's all he knows how to do. He loses the love of his life, but destroys pretty much all of his enemies in the process, and ever so briefly retires in Panama or something like that. You know, before he dies. GTA 5 is about a pair of bank robbers, one crazy and the other completely and utterly unhinged and psychotic. The slightly less crazy one betrays the other, fakes his death, and then starts a new life on the other side of the country until the psychotic one locates him and they reluctantly reunite. The less crazy one brings on a third partner to their criminal enterprise, and the three of them, along with some other memorable characters, perform numerous robberies for the sake of saving their own asses, and also one other very big job that forever cements them as among the nation's most ambitious and talented violent thieves. But then GTA 4, well... GTA 4 is about a man who survives a brutal massacre when he was just a young man. He takes on work as both an assassin and a literal human trafficker before one of his shipments i.e. a boat full of people, are lost at sea, and he flees to America to try and find the man responsible for the massacre that he survived back when he was young. He moves in with his cousin and ends up being responsible for them being shot in the stomach, beaten, robbed on more than one occasion, kidnapped, 
and depending on the player's choices, eventually killed. All the while working almost exclusively as an assassin for literally anyone who will pay him enough, including killing for a corrupt police chief, a group of Irish psychos, and the literal CIA, until he finally gets his hands on the man that he was after, and quite possibly murders him. He then gets his cousin or his only real romantic partner killed because of his own involvement with criminals, and then goes dark, presumably because he could no longer live with the reality of just how much pain and misery his actions brought on everyone in his life. Jesus. Now, I am skipping over a lot of details in all the games, but I think my point is rather clear here. In every game, both before and after GTA 4, there is definitely sorrow, grief, and elements of dark humor splashed in with the silliness of blowing up some gangster's warehouse using a piñata. In GTA 4, though, the dark humor parts are far more spread out and more of the exception than the rule. I'd say a good 70 to 80% of the time in GTA 4, the people you're working for, the work you're doing, or the reasons you're doing it are far darker than anything we see in any of the other games, with the possible exception of GTA 4's first DLC, The Lost and Damned, which is also very, very dark. But even that one leans more into the silliness aspect than 4's base story does and The Ballad of Gay Tony, its second DLC, effectively brings things back to a full focus on Silly, with the occasional serious moment, much like what we'd see in the next game, GTA 5, and if the trailer for GTA 6 is anything to go off of, that trend looks to be continuing. So the last thing I wanted to focus on here, that I think reinforces my point, is the contrast between the story that GTA 4 wants to tell, a dark, gritty, violent story based in real-world circumstances like the Yugoslav Wars, and the silly presentation of the game's faux brand names, advertisements on the radio, billboards, the in-game television stations, etc, etc. See, all of these things are perfectly GTA. They feel very much the same as they have in any other entry of the franchise always at least attempting to offer some kind of commentary one way or the other, whether it be making fun of gay people because they exist, making fun of trans people because we exist, or making fun of liberals and conservatives because they exist. Okay, that last one though I'm still on board for. But my point is that the presentation of GTA's parody of America remains unchanged in 4, which is, on the one hand, mostly a good thing. But on the other hand, it ends up being a much larger source of narrative dissonance when contrasted with the story that all the other characters are participating in. I think a perfect example of this dissonance is when you play the mission That Special Someone. Nico will literally force the player to turn off the radio in your car when driving home after making the big decision. This is, as far as I know, the only instance of something like this in the entire series. I completely get why the choice was made though, because having to have such a dramatic story driven decision, and then driving home listening to Laszlo Jones talk about what a creep he is, or Fernando Martinez drone on and on about how insecure he is in his own masculinity would be, well, a bit jarring. And the writers knew that. It doesn't fit. Now I think that even if the radio in-game had been a little bit more serious, this still would have made sense since Nico just isn't in the mood to listen to the radio at that moment. But I don't think that's why the writers made the decision. I think they specifically did this because it would draw too much attention to exactly the problem that I've outlined in this video, that GTA 4's story, while great, isn't exactly on brand for the GTA franchise. Replaying through the game's second DLC right now, the Ballad of Gay Tony, has only reinforced this opinion for me. Ballad takes place in the same Liberty City, and even at the same time as GTA 4's base game, but it feels overall a lot more like the games which came both before and after it. It has a more bombastic and ridiculous arsenal, cast of characters, a more silly story that never takes itself too seriously, 
but also still having the occasional moment that might make you self-reflect on what's being said. Ballad feels so much more like Grand Theft Auto than GTA 4's base game ever did for me. Like I said, I think the Lost and Damned probably leans more towards the GTA 4 side of things, being quite serious a lot of the time, but I think even it leans enough into the ridiculous side while also having its own dramatic moments to feel more appropriately GTA in comparison to Nico's story. I love a GTA 4's story. It is a great narrative and one that can hit pretty hard for a lot of people. It's about a man struggling to find a place in a world that he feels completely isolated from, and in that vein, perhaps the contrast of world and story actually works in its favor. Or at least, I could hear that argument anyways. But for me personally, overall, I tend to always feel a little bit disconnected from the story because of how silly everything else is in comparison to the vast majority of the main missions. I'm not saying that GTA 4 doesn't still have its silly characters and moments, but I also think there's a very good reason that in both of its DLCs and in the series' next entry, the dark, overdramatic, gritty storytelling was dialed back considerably. If GTA 4 had set a new standard, perhaps toned down the jokiness of the social commentary to something like what you see in Mafia 3, it would have overall felt a little bit more cohesive for me. But as it stands, I can't help but wish that GTA 4 had taken place in a different world than the Grand Theft Auto one to give it room to be as dramatic and as serious as it clearly wanted to be more of the time, instead of needing to be super serious one minute and then remind you that don't worry, this is actually still that silly GTA world you're used to. See? Look how funny Roman is! Bowling! Eh? Eh? I'm sure this video has ruffled some feathers, but I stand by the points I've made here. I think that GTA 4 is fantastic and an absolute blast to play. Great gameplay, great gunplay, great story. But I also think it is inarguably the kind of black sheep of the series now, or at least of the series' modern era, unless we count something like GTA Advance, which, let's be honest, nobody does. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'm sure you'll let me know exactly how wrong you think I am in the comments below. I'm sure in a very respectful and completely mature manner. For those who are regular or long-time viewers, this is mostly something that I threw together to keep views up for this week, but don't worry, I am actively working on two new episodes of A Criminal History, as well as a mission-by-mission -mission video on The Ballad of Gay Tony, which is kind of what prompted me to write this little video. All of those videos, though, will be exclusive to channel members and patrons for at least two weeks, maybe longer. So if you'd like to see them sooner rather than later, consider signing up at any tier today. I'll see you next week, though, and I hope you have yourself a wonderful evening. Bye bye Thank mm -hmm. you.